How's it going? We are. We are screen heroes. We are. Uh, I'm Derek, and I have, of course, two of the regular hosts. You guys want to introduce yourselves? Ryan again. Ray. And then we have a first-time special guest over here, Noah. Say hi, everybody, to everybody. Hi, everybody. So, uh, yeah, so this, this is us for today. We um, are down Nicole. Nicole's not feeling well. She usually runs our Twitch stream, which is why we've got the computer set up here, because I will be running the Twitch stream tonight. So if you chat um, in, in Twitch, that will be with me. So Type as fast as possible. Yeah, say, say hi, because we, we do take questions and comments during the stream. We do try to do that as much as possible. Um, so, Derek, so, Derek, I got a question for you. Yeah. I feel awkward. Do we look at each other or do we look at the camera? Because I'm like facing the camera, so I don't know. Do you I do whatever know. feels natural. Okay, cool. Okay, right. so we got the mic here. This is what the podcasters will hear. Okay. Um, and then, you know, you got the camera over there. So really it's whatever Very feels true. natural. Okay. So just stare at the camera. I got this. All right. Well, that works. Stare at the camera. Yes. So, so tonight, today, this evening, this morning, whichever time you're watching, uh, we're going to be talking about Daredevil Season 2. And that uh, obviously is the Netflix show. Many people have already watched that, been watching it the weekend it came out in March. Um, but we wanted to give a little bit of time for no spoilers and, and things like that. So if you have not right, seen that's why we're doing it, season two of Daredevil yet, uh, you're going to want to stop right now and go watch that and then you can come back. You can skip to the end though. You can skip to the end of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. I mean you could, but I don't know what minute mark to tell them to skip to. Oh snap. Five minutes till. <laughs> now, we, now it's pressure. It's so, pressure. Um, and then also for those of you who are listening, you may have seen that we have posted a few times that we are going to be doing a little bit of a contest, and that's uh, Noah right behind your head. You want to grab that pop oh, vinyl? Yes, there? I would love to grab. So this is the Walmart exclusive Black Panther, Captain America, Civil War pop Glitter. vinyl from Funko Glitter Edition. Um, it is very sparkly. It is okay, definitely. I'm, I'm it was Black I'm, Panther. I thought I was Giant Man. Man. It's, uh, it's very, very sparkly. So, <laughs> sparkly. so how do you win this guy? So Ooh. we will tell you exactly what to do here later on in the program, at the end of the program, because you got to listen. We're going to give you a code word. And that code word you're going to have to bring with you next week to our live stream of next week's podcast episode, which will be Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central where we will be reviewing Captain America Civil War, and you will have to give us that code word during that live chat Twitch stream if you want to win that pop vinyl. So, let's go ahead and talk Daredevil. Daredevil! Now's the time to tune away if you want spoilers. Right, yeah, spoiler time for Daredevil Season 2. Okay, so, um, we've all seen it. We've yeah. all seen all of it. Uh, does anybody want to kick us off? Where would you like to start? I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, like, I watched the first few episodes, and then um, I took a small break, and then uh, I listened to a lot of Spotify, and I don't know why this is the one thing that sticks out. De uh, Punisher's first word, bang. That's in the the. Uh, it was in the little trailer for for Spotify, and every time I heard that, I'm like, oh god. It's, 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 it's <laughs> when that trailer came out, nobody knew what he was I know, saying. No, 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 <laughs> he was saying bang. But but then you know, and you're like, oh god, bang. Oh my, it's it's so, it means so much. It's like you're just like. The moment, the moment, because as you know, <laughs> he shoots. So I mean, he shoots Daredevil. So I mean, look at this. We're we're like we're like four minutes in. You've already cursed once. I know. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go in and fix that now. So I know. Don't you feel bad? No, yeah, I, I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. You should feel bad. I, I curse naturally. I don't even know. Try, no. It's really awkward. This is a family friendly podcast. I'm... This is how you don't get invited back. This is, this is true. This is true. <laughs> We're all like, oh, you remember how funny Noah was? Yeah, too bad he's a potty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember him. <laughs> to be fair, you invited me over. I did. I did. Noah is my fault, guys. I'm sorry. I'll, 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 I'll. Ray is taking full responsibility. I have been uh, the person designated to get guests for the next few weeks. So sorry, guys. It's all good. She just lost that responsibility. Anyway, so. so Daredevil. Daredevil. I. Bang. I have, uh, I, I don't know, I really liked it. I feel it went well with the first season. I am interested in comparing the two with you guys a little bit later, but overall I thought the story fit each character very well. I wasn't unhappy with any character's particular stories or their growth because I felt like it fit exactly their vision. Now, whether or not I liked the characters personally, different story. But at least I thought that 
everybody's growth and development served the bigger picture. I did, yeah. I, for one, found season two to be really convoluted. It, yeah. Especially compared to the first season. So I, I liked it. I want to get that out of the way to anybody who wants to kind of jump on that. I liked it. I think season one was better. Um, I think that season one just had a more refined story. Having Fisk as the big bad throughout the entire season, I felt was just a really good way to tie everything together. Whereas this just had between Punisher and Elektra. Oh yeah, and Fisk is still in there. And you have the hand and you have Stick. It just, you know, there was just a lot going on. And I felt like it didn't really come together until the last, I don't know. Probably a few episodes. 80, few. 90 minutes, maybe. Um, that it kind, of, it kind of felt like, you know, if it had been a single episode, that would have been the last three and a half minutes where they wrap everything up by the end. <laughs> it's kind of how it felt to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wish they could have gone maybe a few more episodes instead of just, what, the 10 to 13 episodes they do, you know? I'm just going to not touch the tape. Um, uh, I, I, think it's, I do think it's funny because I actually, before you guys had finished the season, I asked you when you were on, like, episode nine if you guys liked it better than season one. And uh, I don't remember what Rachel said specifically, but I definitely remember Derek saying that he liked it better than season one so far. And I said I thought it would be interesting to see if he still felt that way at the end of the season. So And I, and I don't. Yeah. Um, there are parts of it that are really good, right? I think that Electra's character is very interesting. I like learning more about Stick. It was cool seeing Fisk again um, and kind of seeing how he was going to handle being on the inside and all of that. Um, but I just felt like it wasn't focused enough. There was just so much sure. going on, and I... Maybe I'm just not a fan of the character, but I didn't really care for the Punisher storyline. It felt like a, a distraction more than anything that just kind of caused everybody to, to not focus on what was really going on. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to lay this out to you because you did. I definitely liked and enjoyed season two, but I agree. Season one was a lot stronger. I thought seeing the evolution of Daredevil, seeing him turn it, you know, into the Daredevil that we know from the comic books... Uh, was was vastly more interesting than what happened in this season. Uh, it was just, like you said, very convoluted. There's no way that Daredevil could have filled out 13 episodes by himself after you've seen it. I mean, yes, it's convoluted, but it almost had to have a lot of stuff going on to fill 13 episodes because <laughs> they had no idea what they were going to do with Daredevil by himself. And taking Fisk out of the picture. Yeah, and they took one of Daredevil's biggest villains out of the picture. Hell's they Kitchen's also biggest took villains. Uh, his second biggest villain and gave him to Jessica Jones because she doesn't really have a lot of villains so you take out Kilgrave you give them to somebody else that does change things it a does. lot too yeah. so that's your only big villain is Fisk and Fisk is also a Spider-Man villain <laughs> and a Fantastic Four villain yeah. like he is bigger we don't than, have to worry about those guys <laughs> right. he's bigger than Daredevil you know, yeah, so he's just a general New York, like Hell's Kitchen, uh, bad guy. And I will say the simpler that, season but. was more impressive. However, I personally believe that the gore was a bit toned down. Now, it's just done differently. Really? It was just done differently. A lot more bullet wounds in this season. The thing too. is, the first season, I have a lot of triggers. I've had issues and stuff. And the first season was much more full of, like, daddy issue triggers for me so I I we had to take a few breaks during the first season because I kind of lost my mind so I enjoyed watching this season more because at no point did I end up like crying because of how it affected me now that's just my point of view I just feel like the bang 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 of the Punisher was a lot I don't see the thing is I wouldn't call that gore. I would yeah. just call that the the context of the violence. The, the criminal almost getting his Whatever. ankle chopped off. That was gore. Well, what about like the bamboo opinion. torture that Stick yeah. gets? At that the was end? like, like that's I, pretty I think intense. The last episode and a half had Plus more. That episode nine freaking jail when he's yeah, like that was intense. stabbing people in the neck and having stuff shoot out, oh. slitting the neck. So like yeah. the, the, right, the second right half of, of the season <laughs> had more gore than like the first half combined. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean there was a lot of when when the before you know what's going on and he guns down that yeah, Irish Yeah, in the very family. first episode. Yeah. yeah, when they're all at that dinner table. I mean, you see a lot of body parts blowing up. Yeah. You know, it's a very That's different fair. kind of violence. It's a very I different agree. kind it, of gore. It's much different than what we had last season with Nobu and Fisk. I think the sounds are what got to me. Like, you, I laughed every time Daredevil's uh, baton, like, flung at somebody. <laughs> that noise, noise. I could not help but laugh every time. And Nicole was probably really annoyed with it by the end of it. But, yeah, I laughed every single time. I smiled. Time. I definitely smiled. It's so, it's so 
satisfying <laughs> the sound. Like the sound of one of those things hitting somebody in the head is just great. Or even hitting a gun out of the Punisher's hand. Yeah, those are, those are some cool moments. Yeah. I will great. say this to your point that Daredevil could not have filled out a season by himself. I agree that with oh, that. Was, that was you. I'm yeah. sorry. I agree with that. But I would have rather have seen more of Elektra's backstory because I found her character much more interesting and when compelling they, in the than last the Punisher. episode. They gave her all of a sudden a childhood, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Where was this in episode five? I, I feel like the board yeah. meeting for this show was like, "Well, half the room was like, I want to do Punisher," and half the room was like, "I want to do Elektra," <laughs> and they were like, "Well, okay, we'll do both. Why not both?" And then they just did that, and it turned into this huge. They had the like, little taco shell kid, right? Come in. Exactly. She just walked in. Like, Why not both? <laughs> See, and the problem with that, though, is that, again, kind of like Fisk, I mean, the Punisher stands on his own. He doesn't... Both well, well, characters well, kind of suffer. I think that, they had yeah. to... Well... I think they had to tease the Punisher to get his original one, because I would have wanted an original Punisher show on Netflix, and then bring him in, because he didn't fit the hand and Elektra and the Daredevil story right off the bat, you know? No, no, he was... So it's like, he would have been saying... good to come into season three... He his storyline like, is the only thing that made Karen Page watchable this season. True, yeah, yeah. I, see, I, I don't even. She's an entirely different story. She's an entirely different story. I don't even <laughs> know if I agree with that because his entire character just basically gave her a ton of reasons to make really poor decisions. That's all her her entire character this season was just a series of poor decisions. But at least but this time she was acting on her own. But it's but it's series, I mean, kind of it's season two of poor decisions. So <laughs> she she had some poor decisions in season one. So she could have toned down the poor decisions and yeah, but her, at least she was persistent in season one. In season two, she was inserting herself into True. things that she shouldn't have been. Like even and I'm drawing a blank on the cop's name, but kind of their like commissioner right. Gordon yes. guy, yeah. right? He, he like, is their commissioner, right? But like, even he's like. You're here too, like yeah. you know when when they have the the that's hostages escape. That's the third escape, skirmish like, really? he caught her at, and then he <laughs> like that's, yeah, at that, that point if you're thing. if you're a cop at that point you're like you have to be involved in this. I'm in some bringing way. you in for questioning, <laughs> right? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. You know? You're an accessory at least, and you're, she was. You already got promoted via you know Daredevil's help, so. Right. Which is why I like that relationship, but just the point that he keeps seeing Karen Page at all of these really terrible situations, where she just miraculously shows up there. Bad luck, and you know, no, it, it's bad that she continues to put herself in those places. Yeah, she's inserting herself into those situations. It's also, not like it just befell her. It was right. Like in the first season, she gets attacked. She, yeah, they're, just, they're trying to. She's kill not her. looking for that trouble. Yeah, right. this time she's a, a magically a reporter, a really great journalist. <laughs> here's and, the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. They give her these magic abilities abilities to be the best research journalist I've ever seen just off the bat. Right. And yet she can't figure out the Daredevil is Matt Murdock. Especially like, like at the end when they're like three inches from each other's faces. And at that moment I'm like, like oh she figured it out. grabbing her no. face and she's like, she still huh, can't figure it I've out. never like slept with this guy. I have no but idea what his normal voice is. Or... Yeah, she hasn't slept with him. Yeah. They got really close. That's like, a really big on. problem with this series is in the comic books Daredevil is like a Playboy. Yeah. He, yeah, he's a sex he fiend. A and fiend. It, you, we have never seen him get laid in this series. Except for, like, there's the one, like, weird thing with Elektra that we don't, you know. I mean, in the boxing. Yeah. Room. But, but that was, like, that, ten years ago? Five right. years ago? Yeah, you never, like that wasn't even in, in present That's day. a huge part of Daredevil's character. I mean, yeah. yes, he, he should have been with Claire, uh, Karen, and Elektra At all least. of this season. And probably <laughs> Jessica Jones by now, too. I imagine to a certain extent they wanted to tone that down in much the same way that they toned down Tony Stark's alcoholism issues. Oh, oh, yeah, because was... we're really concerned about, like, the little kids watching in this one. That's yeah. not, no, I don't think that's what it is. It's just, you still want the character to be likable. And... Well, I feel like he just needs to get laid at some point. It's... I mean, he did, Come... well, yes, I imagine that he and Elektra did at some point off screen. Yeah, but you don't know that. I mean, come on. It did never seem pivotal to the story. Well, I just want to see my boy get get you know I mean, get it. I guess well, I also want to see have... Karen Page become a junkie because that's, that's her true. biggest downfall. I really thought that's what they were going to do with her character in season two. Clearly like that's what didn't. makes her death in the comics so tragic is that it wasn't a super villain that took her down. It wasn't something that Daredevil could have stepped in. She ODs like a terrible little drug addict. Dogthorpe says you need to keep it kid friendly, man. You're doing him a discomfort. Okay, oh, I'll keep that in mind. Oh. About getting laid? About Matt Murdock getting some, yeah. Come on, man. Watch the show. That's his character. Read the comics. Anyway, okay, so we yeah, need to right. talk about The Punisher, because I'm a huge talk about Punisher, Punisher fan. I um, think we all are. Not Derek, but I Derek think... Derek likes The 
Hunter. I liked really him like more before I watched this season of Netflix. That's fair. Okay, you can you can not like this portrayal. Okay. This is the fourth incarnation. The fourth. Would you like yeah. This is the fourth incarnation, fourth Manda live action play, The Punisher. You have Dolph oh, Lundgren, right. Thomas Jane, Ray Stevenson, and John Byrne. I forgot all the Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> How could you forget about the Dare Dolph you? Lundgren? Yeah, no joke. You're I mean, in, in, in much the same way that you know, I wouldn't consider David Hasselhoff to be you know Nick Fury. I do. How <laughs> dare you? All right. Okay, Derek. Is it like you didn't like this Punisher because he was in the storyline, or it's you just didn't like this Punisher at all? He I mean, seemed storyline. He was a bit. Odd. He, he seemed completely unnecessary to the story, number one. And number two, I just wasn't buying into the way the character was being handled. I absolutely believe that he had significant PTSD issues. He's obviously crushed by what happened to his family. And I understand that. But he was crazy on a level that just seemed even just exaggerated for it what was going on. It did come off like it was too far gone. Well, like, you know, it's, it's Hell's Kitchen in New York. People get murdered all the time. He's ex-military, which means he's seeing people get killed or he has also killed people mm. so having a character like that in a context like that go that far off the deep end just doesn't work for me and and then he pulls it back at the end where he's you know fine and yeah he's yeah. like he's just totally cool sitting on the top just you know he's gonna sniper shoot for for daredevil now it's a good little team up yeah, for like 10 seconds and then he's just like he's got the symbol and he's like walks off it's like by the way, that the, the shack that he gets all of his gear from. Yeah. Who else was that? Was that supposed to be the colonels? Mm. But they had dri- they were driving for like ten minutes. Is that so? She, they were, he was going to take Karen to the shed and kill her in the shed. I think he was just probably just take, know, taking honestly. her to the woods. Yeah, and, right. And so it, it just seems just... super convenient that they drove for 10, 20 you minutes. Found that? I, I thought happened it was to be like ten feet from like the shack. Extra hideout. To be fair, or something. I mean, like, he was probably know. making her drive in the general direction that he knew, which was probably in that direction because he kind of knew the area. I don't know, just, that just, just that doesn't work for me. Did at you all. guys know who the blacksmith was beforehand? No, no I did not. I didn't know that. So I you, totally you, called well, it. You called it. You called. You <laughs> did call I, it, but you called it in the last episode. You shut it. <laughs> How just, dare you? It's just a me. super super convenient way, and su- like I thought that was a huge cop out to make it the general. It's like it. I I, I thought it, it was. It's, a bad bit too connected yeah. to him, to be honest. But I knew once they got on that ship, there's no way that guy we had never seen before is yeah. this big heroin dealer. That's not yeah. happening. Yeah. Well, I, I honest, knew that wasn't him. I yeah. honestly thought it was somebody that like Gal knew. Yeah, only sure. was keeping her hidden, I and that. I was expecting something to connect, like some puzzle piece that connected Nobu to Gal, and so you have the hand. You have Gao and her heroin dealers, and okay. she's all magic. And then you have the blacksmith in the middle that connected them. Like, I thought maybe it was going to be a hand member that went rogue and was trying to steal business. And There was a moment where I thought it was Stick. Mm. No. There was there was a moment where I thought it was. Oh, and then they mentioned Gao. She, 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 she got popped in in season two, so... She, you know, she had she, she had a had nice screen, little moment. Yeah, yeah, she had a little screen time of yeah. She's so ch- I, I like her because she's so dang evil, but she's chill. She's eerie. Like, yeah, she's like I like her a she's lot. She's a little pain in. She just comes down. She's like, oh, they won't bother you. It's and she'll likely be like the main, main villain in uh, Iron Fist. So okay. what, what, what I like about oh, her that would be cool. Uh-huh. What I like about her and Fisk is they have a set of rules that they live by. Like they're criminals, they're bad people, okay. but they still have an outline that they follow there there is a structure to what they do yeah. so the whole all right you want to talk fine i'll call off my people and she legitimately does that so they can talk and you know he knows that she's going to do that and she knows he's not going to take her down right there like i kind of like that it makes it a lot more interesting because you can have those conversations occur mm-hmm. where otherwise it just has to be the punisher's way and everybody just shoots everybody until there's nobody left well that's what people like about the punisher and that's why it's not that you guys and that's think why this that's is the one best? character Incarnation. I mean, even though you're not a Punisher fan, I'm assuming you've seen the other versions. I didn't see the the um, War Zone. The War Zone. I didn't see War Zone. I tried. It was just not very watchable. I think that John Bernthal has done a great job with what he was given. I think the character was, like Derek said, just a little too far gone. So I'm hoping that now he's gone through and avenged his family's death. That in his own series. We'll see him pull back a bit and a- attack from a new angle. Because right now, it's it's tied between Thomas Jane and him. So I'm really hoping that his own series is like a combination of the two. I want more violence, but I also want 
more of a nobility to where Daredevil's not going to apprehend him, but he's going to turn a blind eye. See, yeah, yeah, I like that. But do you? But is that where you think his story is going to pick up after all of this? Or yes, before? I hope so. I really. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to be before like kind of doing his kind of his war zone and going up to this and then. No. Well, I think that would be kind of boring because we kind of saw the kind of yeah. Right. We did. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping, but. You know we how, didn't see you know it from his point of view. Goes. No, you could do a but companion I, series. I don't but... really think that's necessary. I want to see him go off and do his own thing in another part of New York. Yeah, I don't need to see him standing outside where the Irish guys are having their dinner. Like I believe that he was standing there with some big guns. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually sad that because in the promo art or um, you know photos, he has his little mini gun. I was sad. He gets it at the end of the, of the season. I know he, he got he it. He gets it, but you don't he really didn't, see him use it. Anymore, like, right? I would no. love, I would have loved to see him. I feel like there's probably some take, footage that didn't him take make it the on, final like, cut that has that. Him because they made it a point hand. to show him holding that. So. Right. Yeah, like that, I was like, oh, that's a good gun. So <laughs> I, think it's, I think that was more of a nod to a signature look of his. Yeah, you know, right. it's kind of like in the first Iron Man where you know Terrence Howard looks at the silver Iron Man suit and he's like, next time. You know, I don't like. I don't want to look. I want him to pick it up and use it. So okay. I think I think that Rachel hit a lot of my points about the Punisher oh, yeah? too. I That's think good. that uh, that there's going to be a very big divide in the Punisher fan community because I think that John Bernthal's Punisher is more of like the crazy, uh, you know, not really thinking through stuff as much. Whereas if you go look at Thomas Jane, and I like to think of Thomas Jane as the dirty laundry version of the Punisher. That that I liked is, both versions. I, I just think that the, the Dirty Laundry was they were able was to go so further good. because it was an independent thing it wasn't yeah. like actually endorsed by Marvel or anything the movie was I, I enjoyed the movie too yeah. but I think the Dirty Laundry thing portrayed what I would want better but he was definitely more of the like tactical uh, military focused guy mm-hmm. whereas John Bernthal was, was more believable look wise as a military guy but he was just kind of off the deep end yeah I mean I thought he was fine as an actor for the role. I thought he was fine. That graveyard scene when he's uh, yeah, that was, that was that really good. Was episode scene. four, that was I, like, I like if you didn't cry, you have no emotion there. I, I like the rooftop nuts. scene where he's got yes. Daredevil tied up with the chains. Like I, I thought he was good, but the story was just so convoluted. I mean, they spent half the season showing how the cops covered everything up, only to tell us at the end that not only did a bunch of cops cover up a big mob shooting for some strange reason, but. That shooting was basically designed just to kill Frank's family. Yeah. Like, that just seems so over the top. So you're you're telling me that the blacksmith got together all of these people who he could have made a ton of money from, had them all killed with cops involved just to screw up Frank's family because he didn't want in on the drug run? Like, that just – that doesn't even seem – that seems like Hell's Kitchen is a screwed up place, Derek. Right, but that means, like, the blacksmith has to be just as crazy as Frank with nothing happening. (laughs) <laughs> I think that's probably accurate. It I just, think so there too. were a lot of but flaws it in the story this season for me. compared like, to the first season. Fisk's motivation makes so much more sense to me yeah. than the blacksmiths. And maybe it's yeah. because we didn't get enough time with the yeah, blacksmiths. Yeah, they didn't really get to develop like half of their villains because they didn't uh, they have, they have enough time in the show. It's only they they that's the issue, season. right? They it put, is they issue, put yeah. in Punisher and Electric because they didn't have enough to do, and then they put in too much. Yeah, yeah, because they had they went with the hand and they went with the blacksmith for the Punisher things. You could have taken the hand. You, you never needed what happened in the last episode from the hand side to happen in this season. You could have That's done true. the Punisher stuff and given the blacksmith more time yeah. for us to find out what he's about. But then Electra would never really made sense in the season. You could have just had her disappear, being scared of her own thing. Or you could have had her switch sides and defect and become the leader of the hands. I mean, she, she gets attacked at the airport. Yeah. She wins. We don't have to see her again after that. I mean, that's a good way for her to end. We already know that she's leaving. We know that there's people after her. And then you make it a her and Daredevil thing for season three, which I assume they'll be doing, right? After the Defenders. After the Defenders. I mean, it's going to be some time. But then you have time to take the Punisher and actually explain what's going on and give the blacksmith a chance to show that it makes sense. The cool storylines about Elektra are when she is resurrected. Unfortunately, the movie kind of butchered it, but... They really could take all the different villains that they had in the movie, Typhoid Mary, and make them pretty awesome. But now she's a villain. Electra's a villain, and yeah. Matt Murdock gets in the way again and like tries to stop him. And I think their storyline was really good. The two of them had really good chemistry, and I wanted... So you're saying you thought she was better than Jennifer Garner? Yeah. <laughs> 
You're better than Jennifer Garner well, as Electra. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that point. I, I will argue that point. <laughs> no, flattery gets me whatever I want from Ryan. That's true. I don't want to see Ryan in the Jennifer Garner get up. I, I, I don't. I do. <laughs> that was my Electra impression. Um, uh, I actually anyway. didn't like Electra this season. I like. I'm not a huge fan of her comic book character, but I That's feel like fair. she wasn't portrayed like as a bratty kid. I feel like the what we're going to get in the next season that they, they kind of alluded to with her in the tank or whatever is like the evil, yeah, yeah uh, Electra. You yeah. know, like the one that you really know from the comic books. And I'm much well, more excited about that this season. I was not thrilled with her. I, well, and since her character ends where it does. Again, having her just disappear after the airport scene would have made sense. Would have been fine Absolutely. because next we see her, she's in the thing. And What's as a Punisher difference? fan, I felt like he was done a disservice by the last in the last episode. You never really got to ra- a good wrap up of his story, and then he just like later, shoots it from a rooftop, one like three guys, and so that's the, that's how he helps. Yeah, like see you later, Come Red. On. And that's the end of it. Like I, I did like, and love the Red house. thing. You know, him calling Daredevil Red that one little thing like yeah. humanized him a lot for me. Yes, yeah. he's a crazy guy. But he gave this dude a nickname, and he knows that he's helping him. And... It's like Wolverine and Bub. You yeah. know that Wolverine has feelings, or it's he's not going to murder you. Not, <laughs> not showing that he has feelings, but, yeah. you know, having some outlet. No, I, I like that part, too. But, the, yeah, the end of the character, just it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. It was disappointing. Yeah. Like, where is he going? Yeah. See, and is he for staying me, in Hell's Kitchen? Because it's like three square blocks. Yeah. For me, I didn't like Electra to the very last episode where they revealed she was a black sky, and she was a... Um, kid just training and learning and controlling this like darkness within her this whole time and that to me makes the rebellious crazy teenager college student believable then because before that she was this to me she was like a highly skilled Laguna Beach loser yeah like she's just an heiress who I thought was who spends her time in the acting OC out yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's this, definitely the way they went with her, which I don't think is very true to the comic book portrayal. Well, this at least portrayal. made it believable. The thing is, they should have shown that From the beginning. earlier. You don't yeah. have to say that she's a black sky. Show that she's been training since she was a kid, and she murdered somebody for the first time when she was like 10 years old. Yeah. I felt you know? like they could have handled it the same way they did for Matt Murdock's character in season one, where you see him training with Stick. And but this journey. is an Electra show. This is a Daredevil show. So if but they go bar- into like the childhood of barely, every, every the, character... This season's barely a Daredevil That's season. That's fair, but I'm saying that would have made even more convoluted stuff happening in the season. But than... it would have made it worth more, though, for me. Because for Electra's character, it was all thrown in at the but end. But who do we take that away from? Does that come from the Punisher? Obviously, that's going to be where you well, are. Well, that would be my... No, I like honestly Punisher, feel but... like it comes from Karen. Well, the problem, I, I would be okay with that. Here's the problem with that, though. I don't disagree, but if you, you start to limit her character, exactly, you then end up losing chunks of the Punisher you story. You could have taken out... The whole part about them dating in the first like five six episodes, since they didn't really go anything go anywhere with it, since it got cut short, you well, just you needed take to have it. the falling out. That was important. But you could still have that as friends, and you could still have that they're secretly in love with each other and haven't like acted upon it yet because yeah. they're coworkers. Yeah. And then, I, I felt like it gave the falling out more weight. <laughs> True, because but, I mean, he and Foggy then, go way back, and yeah. but I mean, then you could still cut her parts out instead of being at. Every single crime scene about her investigating, you, know, you, you, you do one, like every other one. Be like, okay, she's a reporter. She, 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 you know, she's at this crime scene. Skip a crime scene. You know, do, you know, fill some other story. Oh, she's at another crime scene. You know, doing a doing her reporter thing now that she has reporter skills. So you brought up Foggy. What did you think of Foggy this season? Loved I him. loved him. He actually might have been my favorite character. They, this they definitely went the right direction. He was whole, great. A whole season, his character never wavered for me. I was never like, gosh, I dislike you this time. In the first season, he wasn't like a highlight for me, but he wasn't a low. I mean, he was just yeah. kind of another character. It was kind of fun to have him around, but he wasn't. Didn't stand he was out. almost like a comic relief like in a very dark yeah. universe. I didn't really recognize him as a major player until Nelson versus Murdoch, and that was a great episode in the first season where the yeah. two of them are going at it. And he finds out that he's Daredevil. But this season, he brought his acting chops every single episode. And he, Foggy's character was just good every episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I love him. I love that he's like the one normal person 
in who knows what's going on, who really does, and is still willing to stand up for what the right thing to do is. Yeah. He still has his convictions that he's holding to, whereas like Karen's have wavered quite a bit everywhere, right? But yeah. his doesn't. Like you know, he is like the hospital scene, for example, where the where the junkies have like the knives or the gang members have the knives, right? And you know, he's able to talk them down, put his life at risk in front of Hashtag all of these lawyer. people. I mean, but I love that scene though. He he has guts that I think. Well, they showed in that courtroom scene too, where when Matt didn't show up and he yeah, had to be yeah. the one to get yeah. up there and, and do it, even like though he didn't want to be. I like, it's, it's, I like his lawyer scenes because even in season one, it's he gets hit with a ton of information. He's like, "I'm a bad lawyer." They walk ten, three steps away. They're like, "Oh wait, snap, snap, snap!" And he rattles off law. He rattles off everything, and he is sassy as heck. Mm. Every I, time, I, I love, love that they kept that. that consistent. I love that he's so strong because see, Matt Murdock can be courageous because he has all these abilities. He can take care of himself legitimately against almost anybody. Foggy can't. You know, he, when he goes to that that bar, that like biker bar yeah. place, right? Like he legitimately Which is a tie into uh, Agents of Shield, also. By the way, yeah, I know you guys don't watch that. The uh, Dogs of Hell or whatever they're oh, called. Yeah, yeah. They were in a, a biker gang in Agents of Shield that got that with the. The person from Asgard, the woman, the sorceress, or oh, whatever, what's yeah, her name? In, oh, in um, she was yeah, she was a I guest in that show about. anyway. But she like charms these people and right. yeah. rides off on their motorcycles. It was just a I weird really tie. In that, that's cool between though. Marvel TV. But what I loved about that was he was legitimately going to a place that he could have never walked away from, and he kept pushing it. He kept getting information every time he was threatened. He was like, "But I, you know, what yeah. about this? But do you know this? How about this?" Or one more question. I was so excited when he was like, I'm done, Matt. And like went off to go and be in Trinity's law firm. Or yeah. Whatever. You know, that was, <laughs> that was, that was, that was, that was awesome. I'm like, you do you, boo. You go do now, your it thing. It didn't make sense to me that they would offer partner yeah, right away off of an opening statement. But that was a statement. huge case, Actually, though. That I think it's the name case. recognition. Everybody knows that name now. That makes sense. And they're okay. able to bring in a very different side of the Oh, law. look at Nelson from the Punisher case. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That's. I thought that was a really cool play, and I love that connection. I thought that was a really I still think it's a do. little much, but I do think, I mean, he's obviously a bigger name with the Punisher case. And that courtroom scene was great with him and the Punisher. So oh, good. my gosh. Yeah. I, I actually would have wouldn't have mind watching more of the courtroom stuff. To yeah. be honest, yeah. I enjoy. But that. they're saving that for the She Hulk series. So. Of course, of course. <laughs> We're all looking I'm at Ryan. No, I'm so. just watching. Okay. Yes, I think Ryan did just say you do you boo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For the record, mm-hmm. that's because of me. These two clowns now say it. Derek has never said that in a place that's been recorded, so he can still maintain innocence. I, I can neither confirm nor deny those words have ever left my mouth, other than when Dogsworth asked me if you had said it. So yeah, so now there is yeah. recorded evidence. Classic, 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 Ryan. Classic. Um, but anyway, I, what did you guys think about um, that? The whole kind of conspiracy to cover everything up by the police. Drawing a blank on her name now. Reyes. Uh, Reyes, Reyes, thank you. Um, what did and you guys think it. about that? Because I personally felt like it was one of the more convoluted aspects of the I think it was a bit much because it was story and then she was like, no, 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 wait, yeah. And then she got shot. <laughs> it's like, it was too much. It was too much. It was if they didn't into bring it. in the blacksmith at the end because he was thrown in like the episode after that, I don't think it would have been that bad because to me... You have a sting operation with the FBI, with the NYPD, with the district attorneys involved, and it goes right. Everybody's getting promotions. Everybody's getting raises. Everybody is just full of money and accolades. They're on their pedestal. It goes wrong, and like 100 people are gunned down, including civilians. See, I could actually kind of... Reduce that a little bit and then bring in kind of the blacksmith if you really wanted him next season. Be like, oh, like, there you go. yeah, you know, except oh, that was not a villain that could I, take I know, but, season, you know, not even but close. no, just kind of part of it. Or, you know, drag that into, you know, the Punisher series, you know, be like, oh, wait, this Well, they are dragging that into the well, Punisher series. Well, I don't think Nobu and well, Gal well, could handle, story. I don't know or where Eli, story, so. or, uh, I don't think they could have been by themselves, but the fact that they're all together and their Fisk's legs to stand on worked in season one so maybe the blacksmith is season three's leg to stand on no because fisk is gonna be back 
She's Your gonna be out here face soon. is going to be bad. I mean, they spent too much she money. I, mean, I feel like Fisk that? is going to be it like the Loki of the TV universe yeah. where he's like in multiple shows and he's kind of the kingpin And that's how everything. you should do it because, in my opinion, he's definitely the strongest actor that they've had yeah. so far. Uh, I think he's, he's really good. phenomenal. So if they do that, great. All power to him. But... Well, yeah, and he's he's not he's gonna be wasted if he's not in the Spider Man movie too. I think so. It's unlikely, but I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna keep, keep my well, hopes up high. They Based on the direction him. they seem to be going for Spider Man, I yeah. can't imagine they wanted him to be back for more. However, he when this was over and originally it was supposed to be a one season deal, he signed on to do the new Emerald City. TV show for NBC right. that debuts in April. Well, people can do more than one TV show in a, in a year. Which is so. why they figured out yeah. how to bring him back for that full episode. That whole episode was all about him, and it was awesome. I mean, you, you don't want to really just keep episode. doing yeah, this because then he loses some of his mysteriousness and his the power. Daredevil also doesn't look that great. A hero looks good when they have a ton of rogues that come after him, you know? So if you... Having one solid villain is great, but having multiple make you look like you're a formidable opponent. I could actually see Fisk, you know, get you know getting out, and then you know Daredevil De- 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 trying to you know put him back in, but then Fisk bring in some more friends, so I, you know, some new faces, right? Whatever those may be, whatever direction they're gonna go, um, and then just kind of keep having you know those rogues, those random little one-offs, but there's still one main guy, but there's still. Yeah, I think he's going to be the main villain yeah, of the yeah. Defenders. Yeah, he's got, a, he's he's got a lot of allies and be like, okay, well, you got so many walls. You got, okay, well, you beat you know these few walls. You still got me, though. So. Yeah. I honestly kind of want to see Vanessa go all crazy pants because in the first season, she started off a very sane woman and her love for this man like broke her down faster than Joker and Harley. And <laughs> I just, I want to see her... Ooh, that reminds me of the scene between Matt Murdock and oh the Kingpin in yes. the jail when so he's like good. when he's all fine and calm and then he says Vanessa and he goes just <laughs> and he like bam, bam. he didn't even try he just stands up yeah. basically <laughs> and he like he just starts beating the crud out of Matt Murdock that scene so I love Fisk and this is so this is not a thing about D'Onofrio or anything like that but I felt like the way he took control in the prison was too easy even for him. See, yeah, I disagree. He's can, the whole point of the kingpin is that he you, can do that. You know, I, I understand. But they kind of pointed out that aside from that one guy and his lackeys, nobody wanted that position. People wanted to keep their head down and keep alive so they could get out. No, I, I know. But basically, by the time that scene happens where he, he kind of beats on Matt and the Punisher gets told just walk out of prison, he's literally bought... Everybody who runs that place, and which just, is uh, Hell's Kitchen, is uh, there's so many conspiracies and everything going on. Why is that so hard to believe? Everybody just wants deep pockets. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't work for me that there's not a single person anywhere. With well, there probably is. They're dead. Not, they're dead. Right? They're, they're not dead. saying. I, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just that. you have. Co- so you're telling me you have police killing police in a prison and nobody's noticing? No, no. It's people just, are probably noticing, but no. uh, you know, it's, what are they going to do? That cell, it's that cell block. It's those two guards and that you know, bribe, you know, bribe, and then a few. It's not the entire thing so far. Uh, but but he, I think it, it's, it's like if you have Zootopia. the Punisher, but, if it's that sheep that's controlling everything, you don't go against the sheep. Spoiler alert! Look, yes, Whoa. seriously, you just ruined Zootopia. I haven't seen that yet. Now I'm now I don't have no need to see. Um, that. Look, here, here, here's here's the thing. So is, yes, he, he controls so, so that. Is Fisk the sh- so is Fisk the sheep? Yes. Okay, cool. He controls that cell block. That's true, but he gets the Punisher to just stroll out of prison into an Uber. I mean, like, it's completely ridiculous. He's wearing a prison guard outfit, so, I mean, it's not like he just strolled out and is like, his prison garb, you know, let's see. He still has his faces beat to a pulp. Well, his face is always beat to a pulp. nobody notices. In the diner, nobody ever notices that this man looks like he should be dead. Listen, kitchen has a lot of crime, okay? People get beat up and mugged all the time. He looks like Apollo Creed at the end of the Rocky IV fight. Not all the time. Like, (laughs) when he's going into episode 9, his face isn't that bad. It's, you know. It doesn't, it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me that he was able to do it that quickly, that easily, with that level of control. I think you just don't like the Punisher. And, and well, I was uh, talking about Fisk. This well, one. then he got the Punisher out. I don't know. It's I, a Fisk is great, and yes, maybe that was a little rushed and a little weird, but it was showing of the character of the Kingpin because he's able to manipulate people this well, and that's why he is where he is in except life. This, except no manipulation is really showed. It's just money. And that is, that's but ways that's to manipulate a, some people. But that's not a skill. That's just a resource. 
So is he skilled at manipulation, or does he just have a lot of? Like, he's not bot. buying off the other inmates. Oh, I'm doing good. All of them. He bought off some of them. Sure. Is he though? The ones podcast? that were in yeah, control, yeah, yeah. he bought off. But then he mani- that's what basically manipulation of the rest by fear because they're season. not going to stand up to the other inmates. That's, I don't, that's not manipulation. That's just. Going back to Electra, so I doubt they want to. Oh, oh hey. hey! Whoa, they got quiet. Apparently, we should stop talking. Yeah. No, well, we haven't started yelling yet. I did say that there might be some yelling, so we should probably just get rid of. By the way. According to chat, Punisher always uses Uber, so... Okay, well, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> we are not sponsored by Uber yet, but we're working on it very hard, so, as you can see. And or Lyft, we are available. <laughs> Probably Uber, because we've hit their name way more times than we have Lyft, but... Right. Anyway, I don't even right. know Lyft was a thing. It's, it's a, a thing. thing. It's a thing. Okay. So anyway, Sorry, with a lie, though. Anyway, so we'll forget the prison thing for, for that. We'll, we'll, we'll okay, I think, I think Rachel wanted to bring up a important scene or a scene. Oh, I wanted to talk about this season's level of emotion. I feel like it was a lot different. Uh, there was a lot more uh, hints of love between characters. There was a, People didn't outright say it, but they did and they acted on love in many different ways so that was... i didn't love that part of it you really <laughs> fun yeah i mean i just walk walk i don't walk i walk <laughs> thank you Jared. i don't watch a daredevil show for a bunch of romances okay it's just like i don't watch arrow Why for not? felicity smoke and i don't watch flash for iris i watch it because i want to see flash punch stuff really hard really fast and i want to watch arrow put arrows into people and i want to watch daredevil beat people with billy clubs and Punisher shoot people. And so, you know, season one had a lot of emotion, too. Um, it was it, at a different... It was a, a totally a different, different kind theme, of emotion. Yeah. It wasn't love. And, and I, you know... I, well, Punisher is doing this whole thing to avenge his family. Right. And, and, and I like that part down. of it. Because so that's, that's a, a different kind of love. I right, was talking more right. romantic love. I'm not a huge well, you, fan. You have to humanize some of these characters. So Matt Murdock, again, you have to humanize him. You have to give him human feelings. Otherwise, he's just a guy who wants to beat on. Well, people. you didn't yeah, want him to get true. laid, so obviously he doesn't have any <laughs> I, human feelings. I just so, said that. I just explained why it might not have. One happened. of my favorite parts is at the end when he's trying to convince Electra to just get through this and then leave. And his monologue to her was some of the most romantic stuff I've ever seen. That wasn't in a romantic movie because of the level of emotion behind it. He recognizes that it doesn't matter who he's with. He doesn't think he can ever be strong enough to put up the cow. That is who he is. He is always going to be the devil of Hell's Kitchen. So Not in Hell's Kitchen, though. That's just it. He's more willing to sacrifice the Hell's Kitchen part than the devil to keep her alive because she needs that kind of lifestyle, too. There's no way he could ever be with Karen or Claire for a long amount of time because... They're going to have issues with it eventually. And that's what happened with Karen in the comics. She got tired of it, and she walked away. And she went down this rabbit hole of drugs. So Electra makes sense. The two of them make sense together when they connect on a uh, same goal orientation. So I, I was just really happy with that one scene between the two of them because I felt like that was the first time the two of them were honest about themselves. I thought the scene was other. well done, but I yeah, thought it was, it was. just yeah, it very was. it took me out of the moment because it was very out of character for Daredevil. Like he's like now all, everything we've seen up to this point is that he wants to defend his city, his city, his city and then he's like, "Hey, let's go to the J- Jamaica or the Bahamas and I'll be Daredevil there." You know, I was like, so come Daredevil on, you know, let's see Daredevil in like a Hawaiian shirt with a with the with cowl a lay on or whatever it is, and yeah, with the that's, cowl. That Daredevil scene, breaks up a pot ring. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. that, yeah. that yeah. scene yeah. was really good, and then it lost all of its power when they opened the door to the roof, and instead of there being like a hundred people banging down the door, there's like seven guys standing up. And the Punisher shoots three of them. <laughs> Yeah, like because they're like, well, we're, we're, we would never be able to defeat this many people. Yeah, it's like seven impossible. People. They beat more than that to get up the stairs. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's true. That's fair. That lost all. Cause here, I'm expecting Look, like a legitimate. I'm just trying to tell the guy that I'm dating that I want him to say these things to me. Like, just want us to like mask up as vigilantes and possibly go beat down ninjas and have a romantic moment. Why is that too hard? We, we need to find some that's toxic a good date slime. That is a good date. He's like, that's you a date know? night for us. Right? We, 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 we need to find our own stick. We need a stick. You need some mutagen that we can throw in your eyes, and then we can also have some turtles underneath you, and they'll yes. turn Perfect. into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Perfect. I like the it. Rat. Not affiliated, though. They'll I be will, my pets. I will <laughs> say from a technical perspective, <laughs> I have one major complaint, and I had the complaint a bit in Season 1, but I felt like it was worse in Season 2. It gets so dark 
in some of these scenes that you legitimately can't see what's going on. They might be amazingly choreographed fight scenes, but I don't know. I had to turn up the brightness on my TV. So I don't have my special eyes. Could you see what was going on in those scenes? Not much better. No, it's very difficult. I mean, oh yeah. On top of this, because you brought up the special scenes, special. I got. I got to bring it up. (laughs) My brand. Um, Let's talk about the scene. Let's talk about the scene. The the uh, hallway scene. The hallway. The scene. fight scene the, that was too rival or better. Yeah. The uh, fight scene from this first season. But the hallway slash when he puts the elevator in, the, uh, Punisher <laughs> in the elevator and he fights all the way down. Oh, that was that, is, that oh was cool. God. I like that yes. scene. Not necessarily the best fight scene of the series, one, but, but it's like, yeah, it's like but yeah. I still like the one. Is, I like the one in season one better. They're very different. So the one in the first season really humanizes Daredevil right. and, and it makes you realize he's not just like this guy that can go on fight forever. The the one in the second season makes him seem like he is the daredevil the devil of hell's kitchen when you see him coming down the stairs in that last group of like four guys and he's got the chain yeah, and you gone. see the horns and it's red light and you hear the chain rattling and it's like, like i would probably be pooping my pants right there if i was <laughs> i don't care how big you are if you're one of those how guys, guys never run nobody ever know, runs they're, away they're a mean biker gang of dudes that are like yeah. six and a half feet tall and four look, look, here's the deal look, i don't care how tough or how good of a fighter i ever am if 20 of my guys get gutted, I'm walking the other way they at that get point. Gutted. They it's just got o- bashed on the it's head. It's over with, at that point. That I'm not fine playing. If, if they're with not taking them down, chain then, and you know, a gun. Yeah. So that scene's really well done. I really like the scene. But the one in the, in the first season, because of the fact that it shows him tiring, it shows that he doesn't have the stamina to fight forever. And he's doing it to save a kid. That's a good one. You know, and just the way it was shot was just really cool. Well, he's very, doing this I one to save that, Punisher. So, I, know. I, mean, I think that. All three fighting characters, all three vigilantes, got a really good fight scene. Electra's in the airport was really well choreographed. It was a lot of fun to watch. Punisher's in the jail cell yes. was. And Punisher versus Daredevil on the rooftop when all yeah. the guys are shooting at him and the like. It's not like rain, that. but the like water is coming that. from the that was the water tower. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. That was interesting. Um, I don't know. The, the, the prison scene was was interesting. I thought it was well done, but again, it, it's kind of like a little bit over the top. Because the Punisher, if we want to pretend for a moment that the toxic sludge gave Daredevil some powers, fine. The Punisher shouldn't have any abilities. He shouldn't have any powers. He just should be a tough guy. Right. And he's in no. one of the toughest prisons possible because it's that Hell's Kitchen prison that we were just talking about. is so terrible, right? Right. And he is able to take on, what, 25 guys? He's a special it's ops a trained military guy. I don't guys. think it's that. It was, it was no, whole. it was like 13 or 12 like, guys at the most. And even then, he's 10. a special ops 10. trained... You tell me that uh, that a Navy SEAL couldn't beat up 13 guys that are coming at him in a line yeah, like yeah. that. See I think hallway. it's a silly hallway. hallway. I'm just saying... And guess what? Untrained, like, wannabe gangsters yeah. with, with a shit. Versus and, somebody that's, yeah. me- that's military yeah. special so, wait, ops so we, trained. So we, we've gone from that prison being, like, this hellscape... To being just, eh, it's just a bunch of thugs who aren't trained. Those were Which a bunch of it? thugs. I mean, that, they, they were These working had, for the Kingpin. They, they were obviously they low had, level They players. had weapons. They were from gangs. They, they were weapons. murderers. Like, oh, you know, these these were these bad guys that you're claiming wouldn't have a problem with. Bad guys them. on the streets against a military yeah, trained special ops force. In a hallway fight scene. He's not a martial arts expert. No, but I mean, they teach you to fight in the military. And they but teach he, you to kill people efficiently. And that's what he's doing. He's stabbing people in the neck. He's slitting their throats. You're, you're right about that. But he gets beat up too. And he yeah. never shows wear and tear. Except for, you know, when he's getting his face punched in at the very end by that dude and there's blood flying everywhere and he just happens yeah, to get a shot. he walks into that diner like... Yeah, okay. his face is destroyed. It's not like he's never... Phys- physically his skin bruises. My point is, he never looks tired. Daredevil does. He looks he looks pretty winded Look, at some of those no. points. He just Would happens to know the most efficient way to kill somebody. If they have a scene where Punisher takes a nap. Yeah, like I think that's all Derek, Derek needs to make the Punisher a good character in his opinion. Like my, no, my point no, is because like, Punisher, because Punisher, his goal's not done. He still, yeah, yeah, because he just found out he's not gonna quit he unless he's dead or his, finished. His superpower is his dead. Yeah, family. No, no, no. just like Batman <laughs> is his, no, his, his, his dead money. His yeah, his dead he Except that driven. Batman has spent a decade as a martial arts expert. This guy happened to be in the military for an undetermined amount of time and shooting weapons. Shooting weapons and special forces. You don't think special forces gets any kind of fighting training? I they didn't say that. Fight hand I hand. didn't say that. Bullets still but do he's everything. not a martial arts expert. 
But he's, a but he's trained by martial arts experts. Hand-to-hand. Military is full it's of martial, martial arts, arts experts. It's, it's just basic hand to hand. And he's just well, this strong. Martial arts. Any, strong. Anything that's martial is, is considered martial arts. Okay, okay, fine, Mr. Pants Pants. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just saying, by definition, just because it's not kung fu doesn't make it martial I'm not, arts. I'm not saying that. My, my point is just that he's not an unstoppable killing machine. He is not. The he Punisher in the comic books is an unstoppable killing machine. And that's what doesn't work have, for me because he has no reason to be. People have he's, stopped I think the he has, Punisher, I think he has a reason to be. He just found out some motivation, so he was going have yeah. stopped the and Punisher got... before. And this season... This is the intro. Oh, He's not even the yeah. Punisher until that very last episode. They call him Punisher, but it's just like Daredevil's first season was he was built up, you know, through the full season. He that wasn't Daredevil until he had the whole costume. You have on. guys who have never learned anything more than a couple street fights. They, they won their street fights. They are able to be the big lackeys because of their strength and because of their... Um, uh, talent in bullying. And like, if they're a murderer, they can sneak up on somebody and stab them in the back. Woo, you're a good murderer. You know what I mean? It's not like they're out like fighting martial arts experts hand to hand. Yes, <laughs> you get a you get a gold star. All right. Murders. So last thoughts on the season of Daredevil. We're about uh five minutes away. So what did what'd you guys think? I'm interested to see where the micro uh storyline goes for for Punisher that they hinted at at the end with the CD that he gets from the yeah Johnson. what is that about that would be there's cool there's a whole story micro machines of course. Kid was yes he just fan. loves micro machines that's yeah. awesome yeah. I'm interested yeah Noah I'm actually excited it was a little bit much kind of looking back on it it was exciting to have everyone but then it was like they didn't really explore every story, so kind of seeing where they go next and everything. So I am very excited for season three and everything. So, and Derek. Oh, so oh, for last. me, it was uh, it was fine. It was good. I thought the first season was better. I, I I'm not a big fan of of the Punisher storyline. I just don't find it. It's all still that the best superhero show on TV, in your opinion, correct? No, no, you still like the Flash better. I think the Flash is a better superhero show. Yeah. Are you guys excited for Luke Cage and Iron Fist? Absolutely. I'm I'm really excited for Iron Fist, Luke Cage. I really I like the character in Jessica Jones, but some of the stuff I've heard about the what, the direction they're going with the show in terms of like the overall theme doesn't excite me as much because I just kind of want a superhero show and they're kind of going a different way with it. And that's fine. Maybe I'll love it. I don't know. Did for you sure, like but... the preview at the end of? Your I did. Level. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I thought that was cool. Yeah, yeah the preview was nice. All right. So, all right. So, for those of you who've been listening in, because uh, you know about the contest that we're running, thank you uh, for the next two weeks and stuff. Yeah, first of course, thank you. Yeah, um, thank him. Come on. So, here's how this is going to work for those of you who have been patiently waiting. Uh, for those of you who are joining us late, we next week we are giving away a Walmart exclusive Black Panther Captain America Civil War pop vinyl. And it's in so order shiny. for you to win it, here's shiny. what here's what's going to have to happen. You're going to need to remember the code word. Noah, you want to tell the oh. co-work since you're a guest? Nope. <laughs> I was, no, no, I was saying... That was anticlimactic. Wow, yeah, that was awful. Yeah. No, I was saying... I want to say it. Oh, maybe right. the code word was no? No, no, no. no, no, no. no. The, the code word is Wakanda. The code word is Wakanda. So what are you going to do with that information? I just didn't want to mess it up. Like, next, it's, it's really wrong. Like, oh. next week, next week at the podcast, the live stream on Twitch, 8 p.m. Central Time on Tuesday... When we are doing our Captain America Civil War review, there will be a time where we will tell you to put in that code word in the chat. We will randomly select. We'll do one of the name generators. Everybody who writes the code word, all you have to do is write it once. You don't get multiple. Uh, <laughs> you don't get multiple entries if you type it a bunch of times. Right, Just it's one once. entry per person. If you write it in the chat during the live stream, we will take note of it, and we will we will uh, you'll be entered into a random drawing of that pool of people. Right. So that is what that is. The code word again is Wakanda. For those of you who might be watching this on YouTube or listening to the podcast, when we uplo- you're welcome to join us on on Twitch next week too for a chance to win this. When we upload the video and the podcast, we'll go ahead and have the correct spelling down. But all you have no, to no, do- the code word's not being written down anywhere. Oh you, no, we're not writing this down. You can look it up. It's, you be, and you can listen. Are we to deleting this. comments on the post it's, that say what the code word is? Yeah, yeah. The, the, all of that will be deleted. There's no, it's not in there. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Hargis34. That is not how you spell it. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to look it up. It's out there. I promise, it's out there. Black Panther mm-hmm. is a very popular character, especially right it's now special. with Captain America: Civil special. War. Uh, so Captain sorry. America's shield is made from a special metal that is only found in that particular place. 
So you can find it. I guarantee that I'm you can find the correct spelling for oh, Wakanda. I'm so excited. I'm the only one at this table that hasn't seen the movie, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, we all got to see it. So excited. <laughs> you should be. So yes, next week, contest. Next week, civil war. Next Woo! week, new... And there's going to be probably a civil war between the hosts, so definitely <laughs> you should tune in for that. Spoiler alert, I win. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I quit and leave. <laughs> yeah, probably. We'll see. Um, so before we go, Noah, if people wanted to get a hold of you... Oh my How might they find you out in the social media verse? By the way, Noah is a fantastic photographer. I've worked with him multiple times. He's alright. <laughs> alright? <laughs> Just kidding. I love One Noah. of like three great pictures of Ryan was captured by Several. Noah. Yeah. yeah, of the top three. Would be uh, find me on Facebook, uh, Noah Smith Images. And I mean, I'm on Twitter uh, and uh, uh, Instagram. 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 Instagram as well. It's, <laughs> yes. it's, it's, I'm everywhere. I, I'm a lot of places. <laughs> All right. But you'll talk comics and movies with us. Yeah, of course I'll, I'll, I'll always talk about it. And photos talk. and cosplay. Of course photos and cosplay. Always. All right. Uh, for the rest of us, Ryan, of course, you're at Buster Props. Buster Props. We just uh, released our uh, Daredevil Season 2 helmet this week. It looks really our good. Daredevil Yeah, Blade it clubs. looks sweet. Um, can so I put it on? You, I mean, you can, can if you would like. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't do. know if it'll fit with your okay. hair. You can try it currently. The is. reason why it looks really small is because this mannequin head is really small. It'll look more normal on Rachel. But uh, we'll see. And then Ray, no of course, you're the Super Sirens. Yep. You're, you're one of the Super Sirens. You're half of the Super Sirens. <laughs> yep. So there's that. Uh, for those of you who happen to be in the Kansas City oh, area, God, it hurts. Uh, <laughs> It pokes me in the eye. Well, it's not made to go over a huge bundle of hair, just for the record. <laughs> it's great quality, everybody. I'm blind now. Um, it suits the character. For those of you who are in the Perfect. Kansas City area, we will be, uh, most of us, some of us at least, will be out and about different places for free comic book day. I know the oh. Super Sirens will be at Elite Comics. Mm -hmm. Noah Smith will be at Science City. I will be at Science City. So I will be working. So Sweet. Oh. Your, your day job. So. Yep. Good stuff. We will not announce that. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are listening, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, you can find us at griddaily.com or facebook.com slash griddaily. We're also on Twitter at grid underscore daily. And if you happen to really enjoy the show and you want to help us get better equipment and things like that, we do have a Patreon at patreon.com slash griddaily. Every dollar helps. We appreciate it. Uh, we want to give a thank you shout out to Jordan, who is our number one contributor. Hey, Jordan. So thank you, Jordan. We appreciate the continued support. And for everybody else, we appreciate it. We will catch you next time.